All right, so we have our um, next session by Tyler Urbeck and Kanza Kavil, uh, Kavili, and they will be talking about it wasn't DNS infra CICD with Kubered and Tecton. I'm just waiting for them to join in. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, good. Just waiting on Tyler. Let me see. Um, I think he's trying to connect, but let me see. Oh, he's here. Yeah, there right. we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Figured it out. Perfect. Um, <laughs> you guys have the floor. All right. Let me share my screen to start. Uh, Present. Yes, screen two. Is it all good? Cool. All right, let's kick it off. Welcome everyone for um, our talk called It Wasn't DNS, We Checked, and it's CICD for Infrastructure with Kubert and Tecto. Hello everybody, I'm Tyler Arbeck. I'm an architect at uh, Red Hat Open Innovation Labs, focusing mostly around uh, site reliability engineering. I uh, kind of have a passion for, for this space of uh, automation and and pipelines and things of that nature and uh as you'll see soon uh making things do things that they were probably not planned to, to be how they were planned to be used in the first place uh so uh if you want to feel free to reach out if you have any questions after this here's you know all the places you can find me and we've got uh here with chansu today um thank you my name is Jansu. i'm a site reliability engineer at red hat um i work with uh companies to help them adopt DevOps culture and practices, help them to grow SRE mindset within their organization. And well, it is at the beginning of September, so I thought that this would be time. And as Tyler said, you can reach out through these our links and feel free to um, send a DM or you know reach to us if you have any questions. So let's kick it off. Okay, what are we going to talk today? So we're gonna talk what problems do we have today? And how can how can we uh, move us closer with the with the stuff we have already? So let me draw you a picture. Um, so I'm sure that um, we are all enjoying our CI/CD pipelines. You know, the benefit of having an automated pipeline is places already known and experienced many of us. I'm sure. So it checks my well, my automated pipeline is look, checks my code quality. It runs tests for me. Then it checks some more security stuff. Then it deployed, but then again, it ran a bunch of additional tests, some integration tests, performance tests, etc. And it's all good. It promotes my code to the next stage. So it helps us basically live in the good life because it just saves me from myself. But yet, I know that um, some of you can um, think some examples, even though when your green, uh, pipeline is green, everything was fine, but still something was wrong. And why is that? It's because having a reliable application pipeline is only half of the battle. You need some reliable infrastructure too. And I know that we all do our best for our infrastructure and we all practice an infrastructure as code as much as possible, which gives us the option to share the understanding over our infrastructure, to help to us test our infrastructure in a repeatable way. But do we really have the chance to test everything? What do you think, Tyler? Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, I, I there there is a phrase saying that it's always DNS for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there 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 are just holes in the in the testing strategy that we see in a lot of places today, where uh, an application may be fully tested from from front to end, but you know, anytime you you start touching on infrastructure, oh, that's too complicated. That cost that'll cost us too much money. We don't have the resources. We don't have the hardware to to be able to test this out. So there's there's just from what what we've seen out in kind of in the field, there's just this gaping hole around infrastructure style testing uh, that we we decided, hey, it's time we need we need to have a better way to do this so that we don't need to scream at scream at the sky and say it was DNS again. <laughs> so that's why we wanted to introduce you with some, how um, can I say enough analogy, but it's a nice way to um, put this in, which is. Ghost ships. 
Tyler, would you like to say a few words about Ghost Heroes? Absolutely. <laughs> let let me weave you all a tale here, right? So, for those that aren't familiar familiar with that with the term ghost ships, ghost ships are just these, for one reason or another, uh, whether fiction or fable, are these ships that just you know roam the sea with no crew. Whether something tragic has happened to this crew, or if it's something like the Flying Dutchman, where it's a haunted haunted ship, right? But ultimately. There are no live passengers that that can be that can be hurt. I kind of came across that you know I've, I was probably watching a movie with my daughter and there's a ghost ship on it. But kind of came up with this this a similar idea of, hey, why can't we do the same thing with with our with our technology environments with the you know with our hardware with our infrastructure environments? Why can't we have these ghost environments that you know ghost ships look like a sh ship, float like a ship, you know, kind of go along the water like a ship? must be a ship you know same thing with these these uh these ghost environments looks like prod feels like prod just no real people operating in that environment right um so you know we we really like i like we like talking about these environment these ghost environments hey you know you you have your dns systems you have your your you know things like mainframes you know any kind of like hardware based system you know infrastructure that you have or or not software based you can do load balancers things like that um, but you know, spin them up, make them look just like prod, uh, but right. no people there to, to be impacted with it. The, uh, you know, so that's, that's pr pressure one it, or point one is like, Hey, there's, there's no people that can be impacted by this. So even if something does go wrong as part of our tests, we, we are not hurting anybody, which is the, the key part there. Uh, the, the second part is, you know, on, on top of that. Th this type of testing allows us to get to the point of we don't need to actually have this hardware that's solely dedicated to this. That gets super expensive when you need to dedicate hardware, you know, dedicate, you know, bare metal just to do these things. Why can't we just spin this up in, in you know, in a virtual environment or on a cluster with, with you know, a various amount of tools that we have so that we can, you know, one, take advantage of common platforms, but also we don't need to, you know, have all these expenses to to take care of you know the, these dedicated resources so we 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 decided hey what what tools do we have that that will allow us to do this mm -hmm. so that brings us to to bring our first members on board this uh on on board these ghost ships and chanso i'll let you take it from there yeah it's it's ghost ship no people's gonna hurt but we introduced we onboarded to our favorite tools into our ship. So one is Cupid, which is absolutely our favorite. It's basically here to help us bring our virtual machines into container workflows by running a virtual machine within a container. It's it's super exciting. It sounds super exciting. I, I, whenever I try, I work with Cupid. It's just it just makes me super you no know, hype. And because we can develop manage and deploy virtual machines side by side with our containers and we can take advantage of all the simplicity all the speed of containers and kubernetes and this really really empowering this really empowers us with all the flexibility all the agility we gain with uh, containers and you know it's easy to deploy on top of kubernetes and openshift it brings some um, custom uh, custom resource definitions. It's easy to spin up a virtual machines and it really helps you to standardize things. And it helps you to use all these best practices from uh, Kubernetes, the, uh, Kubernetes, like scaling, over commitment, high availability, all these things. And another thing that we um, onboarded is, I'm just <laughs> a bit teared down for like, sorry for that, but we love it. It's our peaceful cat Tecton. And we use Tecton for CI CD part uh, because we, we again wanted to go with another Kubernetes native framework. So Tecton is here to help us build our pipelines for testing. And Tecton pipeline is quite, to be honest, it's quite different from what we used in terms of um, CI CD tools because there is no um there's no engine to manage to start with. You know, there's this core component of Tecton, there's pipelines, uh, runs as controller in Kubernetes. There is no um there is no engine or plugins that you need to manage. There are bunch of um, custom resources that you need to deal with, which is, it seems intimidating at the, at, uh, at the beginning, but we're going to go, go through it in a minute. So once, once you get used to it, it seems super handy. And alongside with Kubernetes, uh, alongside with Kubebeard, we can make this ship work as, as, the, as our needs and um, for our needs. So, um, yep. 
And, and and one thing, you know, we, we we get this anytime we kind of start talking about this. Oh, does does it need to be Tecton? I've got I've got all these other mm-hmm. CI/CD tools. Like, do, what what about Jenkins? What about you know System X Y Z? And really, you know, it, it could be any 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 tool that you would like. You know, th- this doesn't just work. You know, this isn't a Tecton specific thing. This is a whatever CI process that you want to use. We really like Tecton because, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll use I'll use some buzzwords here. Uh, we we like the the cloud native approach. We like you know b- ha- being able to declaratively define all the stuff. We here love our YAML, so give us all the YAML you we got here, right? Uh, but you know, Tecton is just one approach here. It could you could sub substitute in your your CI system of choice, but what we'll show here today is is going to be Tecton. All right, then. Um... It's a good thing that this <laughs> this is live, but let's see if we're gonna <laughs> sync or. <laughs> um, so I'm taking my ship away, and I'm we're gonna show, uh, do a little live demo for you guys how this is. Um, in. Uh, so which one would you like to uh, start with, Tyler? Would you like me to go through the code first, or try to see? Yeah, let's let's look at the visual first to give folks uh, an right. idea of what we're looking at, and then we can uh, make them uh, break out the spyglass for for looking at some YAML here. All right, so we have our pipeline here, which is, um, well, we tested right before we come, so it's it's all green. <laughs> so it's green. So basically, this pipeline, what does this pipeline do is it gets the um, our, um, let me start for a moment. So we're going to test our Ansible uh, playbook, which we uh, use for installing the um, DNS and configuring the DNS on top of it, which is a very, very core component and important thing that you need to test whenever you do some changes or you need uh, you need to do some tests before you cha- roll the changes on on the production. And you don't have to have necessarily have a test environment or, you know, just for a single line changes in your playbook, you don't really necessarily to have a test environment to test this. So in this, uh, in this pipeline, we, we get our inventories, get our playbook and and for check our uh, playbook if it is healthy or not. In the meantime, we are creating the um, virtual machines inside the OpenShift. And well, it, it takes a bit of time. So we wait for this <laughs> virtual machine to be up. And then since this is a new virtual machine, it has a new uh, IP. We get this IP to create our inventory. And then we test our playbook towards this. And then verify our configuration with an additional task to see if that DNS is, is configured and work as, as we expect. Tyler, would you like to add something more because you love this? Yep. No, no, that, that was all good. Uh, you know, it's definitely th- this whole process is, you know, why, why are we doing this? You know, DNS is a fun thing to poke at because everyone has scars from DNS, right? Uh, w- and the way that people operate uh, DNS isn't always the Oh, what's the nice way to say it? The the night it, it's not the 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 most practical or, or or best maintained system. It's always uh let me go in and, and update this this record or let me go in and just update this config. And you know, human hands make human mistakes. Uh we we'll, we'll, we forget the bracket, we for we typo the the name that we want. And we'll we'll end up with errors. You know, we start impacting the our our users, which is you know, at, at the end of the day is the is the thing that that drives this whole drives this whole idea of why we want to do this. So creating these ghost environments, we're able to spin this up, build something that look, would look just like our uh, our production DNS server. And then at the end, we check to make sure that we get the responses we would like uh, based off the changes that we're making. And if it's all green, then you can then you can build out your pipeline from there. You can automatically progress it through your other environments until it hits production. Uh, so that's, that's the whole thinking behind this and, and why we why we are using this example because we see this a lot so we want folks to kind of latch onto this idea yeah but i promised a live demo so it's better if i should kick this because it takes time and then talk about a little bit more detail so let me see if i have my little comp here yep Yep. and while you're kicking that off i'll explain why we keep saying it takes some time uh (laughs) so we we are running on a fairly small cluster this is just one of our dev dev clusters and also we're running in an emulated environment. Uh, so the performance gets drastically better when you're not emulating a, uh, uh, d- you know, ter- when you don't have a- emulation turned on with Qvert. Uh, so if you're working on, on bare metal or, or systems that, that you don't need to turn on emulation for, you're gonna be in good shape. Performance, much better. 
Uh, but since we're we're just you know virtualizing and emulating everything uh, a bit slower, which is why uh, here in a second when you see how long it took for some of these things to run, you'll see like a forty minute runtime, which is ideally not what you're dealing with. <laughs> Give me a sec. I just wanted to check if everything is fine with my webhook. <laughs> it should have triggered this one. I don't know why it didn't, but because it's live demo, it just worked it, you know, 45 minutes ago as it's in here, but not working right now because it's demo gods. It's just hating us. Okay, now we are going to. Chill. All right. Back in good shape. <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> We've done this like three times. I think all three of them we had some little problems and three of them are different so. and and that's why we have ci right to catch those problems <laughs> <laughs> it's because i didn't push it i committed but of course I, i'm go. too excited for it sorry <laughs> i didn't push it here but on the other side. anyway so what component we have we of course we have pipeline and i'm gonna come uh, uh, to it in a minute but uh before that a uh, uh, tecton gives us the um a component called event listener, which basically um, gives you a webhook for you to set up in your in your um, Git repository, and you can set up for different uh, different uh, event listeners for different actions, like for one for push, and each of them has these uh, definitions for trigger, which one you're gonna trigger, and what sort of values that you're gonna bind from your payload. So, and we have we have that's that's why we have all these trigger binding definitions and some um, but, but, and trigger trigger template definitions. Yes, it's hard to remember this. And these are basically helps you to utilize from uh, utilize getting the values from your payload and put them into the into the pipelines that you're gonna trigger, which is this pipeline. And this pipeline consists of all these tasks that you just saw and it basically takes the values and pass them to the tasks. And you, you can do this some sort of ordering or some parallelizations or retries, et cetera, all these kind of things. And you have these task definitions. That's why I said that it's a little bit hard to get on board with Tecton at the beginning, but once you get used to them, it's it's fun because one, it really helps me to run bash scripts. <laughs> it, I don't have to deal with Groovy and all the other stuff. I love bash. I write basic scripts to do some stuff in here, um, but don't be um, intimidated with all these long stuff because we didn't write some of them. We basically uh, and thanks thanks for this for the um, to the Kubeweird community. We got some ready tasks from the uh, from Kubeweird itself, like creating the virtual machines, waiting for if virtual machine is ready or not, clean up for the virtual machines. All they need to do is just provide some values or our virtual machine definitions or the name of the virtual machines, things like this. And thanks, thanks community again for this. It takes care of it all. And we just add additional tasks around, like cloning the guitar, Ansible playbook, creating the inventory based on the new virtual machines, and kicking off this Ansible for that. And it should still running. It should be still running. Yes. Yeah. Um, what else I can tell about this, Tyler? Yep. No, I, I, I just le echoing what you said. Uh, we prefer to be, you know, sticking with the uh, the ship theme here. We prefer to be pirates. We uh, would much prefer to plunder uh, things that we can find in the community versus having to write our own. I think throughout this whole pipeline, there was maybe one task that we wrote ourselves. Everything else was just things that we were able to pull from the community, provide our parameters to, and off to the races. So. You know, th this may look like a lot of YAML, and it is a lot of YAML, uh, but we didn't need to write all of it, right? We were able to just pull it in, apply it to the cluster, and it was available for us to use. And while it is still running, the Ansible part is also coming from our own infrastructure and uh, Ansible playbooks, because we use Ansible heavily to manage our own infrastructure and look at the number of these Ansible roles and playbooks. It's, it's a lot. The idea was coming from basically this. These are... And we, we have all these environments. Okay, we have OpenStack environments, we have our virtual machines environments, but I just want to check something based on my little changes, like trigger something and to see if it works fine, to see if it leans fine, etc. And you can't really have a different uh, testing environments for it, or you have a bunch of people working on different stuff. You can't have, um, well, you can have some sort of consolidated test environment, but still it might not be enough for you. So it's, all these Ansible playbooks um, 
we uh, we basically come from that idea saying that just want to test this little stuff. I don't want to break anything else, but it's on, on our other side. And we all know that reliable infrastructure is, is, is really important. Yep. So. Yeah, so let's let's actually take a look at our pipeline while while this is still likely going to be running, and to take a look at, at what it's actually doing, right? And I, I think this is this is a really good example of like how how to bridge the gap of some of your your infrastructure's code, your config management tools like Ansible can be bridged with you know a, a Kubernetes native way of like testing some of these things because we're not just testing the deployments, the things that pop into our our cluster, but we're also talking. Able, in this pipeline, we're testing the things that help us build out our entire environment, right? So we're not just testing that our, our manifests look good. We're not just testing that uh, we can spin up a VM inside of, of Kubernetes. In, if, uh, if we dig over to um, the, the pipeline, um, one, one thing that we're actually doing is, you know, we're, we're linting the Ansible because if, if something goes wrong and there's something wrong with our Ansible, we don't want to waste all the time to see a failed VM build, right? So we're testing everything the whole way through our process from the things that we're going to use to build our VM to the building of the VM to what pops out after the Ansible has run. So you can see, you know, we, we've got Ansible linting happening there and I've you know, a lot of times there are things we like to ignore. So you can see like you can even throw in a, a skip list of, of Ansible linting roles that, that you don't like. Uh, and, you know, it's it, this is just a warning, but it's it's still a good warning. It says, hey, you know, you're, you're referencing a file that doesn't even exist in there. So I probably should be more than a warning, but <laughs> um, uh, it still works. Nonetheless, we obviously are not referencing that part of the playbook. Uh, so, you know, it's it's cool to show that, you know, even in, running inside of, of Kubernetes, r running inside of OpenShift, you're able to test out this this full platform. And, you know, again, this takes a while because we're testing it from front to back. But then, you know, one thing you could do even in the future is, OK, I don't need to test out the, the building of my DNS, DNS server. I just want to test out the configurations on top of it. Well, Kubert has a bunch of, of ancillary tools that allow you to just bring a custom image. So you could have that fully baked DNS image, you know, your kind of gold DNS image, and then just spin that up. So now rather than waiting the, the 20 minutes for your DNS server to build, now it's, okay, this thing just spins up in three, four minutes, and then you can apply, you can test out just the configuration end of it. Oh, so they're, a... they're, they're really cool tools that allow you to like speed, only test the, the pieces that you actually want to test. That's, that's... That's a good point. Basically, you can take the um, image of your virtual machine and load it in here, and then you can test on, on top of that too. So, oh yeah, good, good yep. shout out. Yep. And here we're, I think we're we're seeing you know the Ansible run of where things are actually happening. So we're we're in you know we're we're going through our install. We're installing the the Python packages we needed, opening up the ports, all the all the you know Ansible awesome. goodness that that we're looking at here, right? Uh, until we get to the end and where that's where we just configure, you know, we add our, our zone in there that we'd expect. Uh, we just have our dummy zone in there. But that's that's just one part. Uh, you know, it, it's cool to see that you've installed a, a DNS server, but we actually want to check things, right? We want to make sure that uh, the, you know, things actually happen. So I don't think there's a lot of good out output. Mm -mm, in this. Unfortunately, uh, so no, but I can it, show let's, from let's test. Yeah, let's take a look at what's actually happening in that execute Oops. NVM. Again, yet another great uh, task that we were able to pull from the Kubert community. Uh, and it just it literally connects to your VM uh, from your pipeline, you know, based off the secret and stuff that was generated as part of the pipeline, we generate random SSH keys, because you should not submit, you know, commit your keys to your repo. Uh, speaking from experience. <laughs> uh, but if you if we look at the last task as part of the pipeline, Chansu, uh, we'll take a look at what we're actually testing for. And um, I'm, uh, yeah, if we just go into the pipeline itself, not the tasks. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Yep, no, you're good. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's not a very complicated test. Uh, <laughs> I'm just digging to see that I get a response from the zone that I configured. In our case, it's just our, our labs uh, kind of zone that we configured. And I said, hey, if it's empty, it's not there and it's broken. Uh, obviously, we see it's green, so it's there. Yay. Yay. Uh, but the, the cool thing there is there, there are also tasks that you can, you can start you know, probing at records, you know, it's making sure you get the right C name or, or the AA records or any type of records you want to kind of poke around at. Uh, 
and really you know that that's that this is a very plain example because we wanted to kind of give like an approachable example to this but really the sky is the the limit as much as yes. you want to test and poke around at inside your vm the tasks are there you just yeah. need to inject what inject your logic right since this is running and we have only a couple of minutes i can just jump into the next slide and quickly say that the echoing like Tyler said the possibilities are endless well, sort of endless, as long as you have the resources to run fastly in your virtual machines, or, or if you want to wait like 20 minutes like us during a talk. So that's fine too. But now that you know that you can run virtual machines in Kubernetes, you can pretty much emulate. You, know, you can pretty much yep. try to run everything in here. Yep, yeah, your, your imagination is really just constrained by <laughs> CPU and, and memory at this point. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I just need to fast forward. And we also have this slide for talking about what sort of things that we deal, we were dealing um, during, while we were preparing this demo. And well, basically, one is resource. <laughs> it, uh, we were running in virtual environments and using the emulation. So, and I would just repeat the second thing is about the um, Tekton and having the uh, retry many um, persistent volumes. If you would like to use uh, the same volumes for a parallel test of if you would like to run a couple of same uh, pipelines that using the same virtual uh, same persistent volume to you know to clone the playbook or something like this not everyone has retried many uh, volumes so this might be a constraint for you um what else tyler we can say quickly <laughs> yep, yep, yeah the, the only, uh, two things on, on the kubert side is these are virtual machines, but they're virtual machines built on top of your container platform. So take advantage of that. A lot of the times your pipeline will try to connect to a VM and it's like, oh, I'm not ready yet. Well, you know, Kubernetes OpenShift, we have things like readiness probes. So we can sit there and, you know, say, hey, wait until it, this thing shows as ready. We can just run a kubectl wait for condition equals ready. And it'll, it'll sit there and, and wait for your VM to be up. Um, at the same time, you, you might have seen, and you know, we'll, I think we've got the link in here so you can take a look at the repo. Uh, we define a virtual machine custom resource as, as part of it, as part of our pipeline that spins up a virtual machine, but the, the actual running VM itself is a virtual machine instance. So if you don't say spec uh, or running, yeah, inside of your spec to say running to true, uh, it'll create your VM, but it doesn't spin it up because you'll have to have another task that sets that to true or kicks your, you know, it's like vert CTL start or something like that. So the thing that you want to test won't get created if it's not set to true. So keep an eye on that. <laughs> um, yeah, we only have two minutes. So if, yep. we, we just had to run this real quick. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. The repo is out there also just for the example tasks or um, not for the example Ansible playbooks, but it was fun to, Prepare the demo. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess kind of our call to action, right? Get out there, write these tests, write these pipelines for your infrastructure. It is worth it. It will save you all the 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 sharp edges and the in the bleeding uh, that you will experience testing in prod. Uh, so hope yeah. hope to see everyone uh, kind of taking this approach. Uh, thank you again to all the all the community folks for for letting us take all the tasks in and having, uh, you know, kind of being able to assemble it from that. And also take for the live events opportunity. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's exactly. the closest things yeah. that we can get for face to face. So that, that was fun. Thank you. And thank you so much both of you for such a fun and knowledgeable presentation. Uh, it was definitely fun watching all the visuals. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so and much. I don't think we have any questions yet. So I think that means that it was a flawless presentation. Uh, good job, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you Thanks so everybody. much for coming in and presenting. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay,